It is a very good evening and uh, welcome to Sly Media TV. Welcome to uh, the program, uh, one of the programs in our current affairs uh, discussions that uh, we bring you every day here on uh, Sly Media TV. Let me say to our viewers, those uh, uh, that are coming through, please go ahead and uh, send in your questions, your contributions to the topic that we're discussing uh, tonight, this evening on the show. We are dealing with uh, the increase of uh, prices of bread. And we're saying, is it justified? We are going to be assisted uh, by the chairperson of the Grain Millers Association of Zimbabwe, Tafadzwa Musarara. And uh, uh, let me, before I introduce uh, him to you, uh, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to go straight into uh, questions and discussions with regards to what is happening in the country. Welcome back, and uh, like I said, that we are going to be talking about uh, issues around the prices of bread, but it's not just the price of bread that we're going to be focusing on. We're going also to focus on uh, maize meal, flour, wheat, and a whole lot of other things uh, with regards to uh, prices. Like I said, we have uh, the chairperson of the Grain Millers Association of Zimbabwe, Tafadzgwa Musarara. Welcome to the program. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Good. Um, let's go straight into the issues. Um, obviously, Zimbabwe woke up to the news that uh, bread price had gone up. Um, what, what are the drivers? Well, a number of issues. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is to do with the, the geopolitics playing in Eastern Europe. Yeah. Um, the invasion of Russia into Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe has been the... Um, uh, one of the importers of uh, Russian wheat, uh, for, uh, in fact, accounting for 65% mm -hmm. of all the wheat th that we import. Uh, Russia in 2021 was the world's biggest exporter of wheat yeah. with 7.5 billion uh, worth of exports. Ukraine, with the fifth largest, with uh, 3.5 billion mm -hmm. worth of exports. So we have a region, a breadbasket of the world. Mm -hmm. that uh, now at war um, and in f uh, as early as December last year our vessels were being turned away mm -hmm. when the when the tension started to worsen and the insurers uh, revoked their cover so we could not load as, as beginning of uh, first week of actually December last year mm -hmm. uh, up to now wheat has gone up from uh, 480 US dollars landed in Zimbabwe to, to today, the wheat is now costing uh, 785. Mm. So we have inflation in US dollar terms. And this is a global phenomenon. Uh, war is a very difficult uh, activity that you can provision for. So, yes, that's the first part killing us. Yeah. Now, our flour from the 1st of January up to now, double, 100%. But of course, we've got other factors, the domestic factors affecting mm. us. Uh, firstly, it's to do with um, uh, availability of local wheat. Mm. Uh, it's now, we still have it. We have been greasing or blending 30% of imported and 70% of local wheat. Now we've turned around. We are now using more of 70% of, of, of imported and 30% of, 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 of local wheat. Then uh, the movement on the for it, on the auction uh, in August in December the rate was around 95 mm. 99. Mm. Now it has gone up more than 60 percent. It's now nearing 160. Mm. Uh, 155 uh, actually from the results came out today. Yeah. Yes. Then uh, um, we have all other factors. Electricity from one January up to now, electricity has gone up nearly 90 percent. Yeah. Labor is there. So those are the effects of uh, um, what is happening on the global stage in the geopolitics and, of course, the rise of, uh, in cost mm -hmm. of uh, other variables that we, we, we use. But I want to make it very clear yeah. that whether it's milling industry or any of our colleagues in the fast-moving consumer good, we do not uh, uh, 
or survive mm -hmm. from increasing prices. We survive by increasing volumes. Mm. So whenever the prices of these commodities goes up, our volumes comes down. When our volume comes down, we end up laying off people and mm. we, we mm. get into a loss-making zone. So yes, this is, this is the state of play now. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, like you said, that we, we import much of our wheat uh, from uh, uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, what is happening in that region, um, what other options do we have? Well, I will give you the top five wheat importers. Yeah. Number one is uh, Russia, as I've indicated. Number two is uh, United States of America. Number three is Canada. Mm -hmm. Number four is France. Number five is uh, Ukraine. Yeah. So you can see all the five are involved in the conflict, whether via NATO or bilateral. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we, we have a very good meeting uh, with the uh, Canadian embassy this week, actually. And uh, we are happy with the prospects. After next week, we are going to announce to the press our importation plan of how we intend now to uh, uh, replace those exports and obtain an alternative source market mm -hmm. uh, for that wheat. Uh, uh, but there is nothing to panic. We are working very hard to ensure that uh, the market is well supplied. Mm -hmm. We have uh, two evils that we need to, to, to deal, deal with. with. One is affordability. Mm. The second one is availability. So on the affordability, we might have been losing the, it on the front, but the availability we are still we are still secure mm -hmm. we still have uh, stocks coming in and we continue to to build on that however it's war we don't know how to degenerate whether other countries will come in and uh, wheat is a, is an exotic uh, commodity it mm -hmm. was brought in by colonization and they felt they needed to move to sustain or to, 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 to have the bread as part of their diet. Mm. So it has to be imported. So the countries that are, are best in wheat production are U European countries. Yeah. Uh, however, and perhaps regrettably so, we have uh, now consumed the wheat over the years. Uh, that has become a second step of food. We have seen dietary uh, preference changes, especially for the demography between six months old and 35 years. Mm -hmm. They are now moving more away from the sides and millimule towards the wheat and rice. Mm. So uh, if you're talking of vision 2030, and we are talking of a middle income class uh, status for our country and for the households, what it simply means is that um, uh, buying power will improve at the household level. And the first thing people buy when the bank power improves is food. Mm -hmm. So demand for wheat continues. In 2000, this country was consuming 195,000. Uh, uh, fast forward 22 years later, we are now nearing 400,000. We are doubling. Mm. The same with rice. In 2005, this country was consuming 11,000 tons of rice uh, uh, per, per year. Mm -hmm. Now we are consuming 8,000 tons of rice per month. Yeah. So uh, our data preferences are leaning towards uh, imported commodities that uh, we don't have the geographical endowment to produce locally. Yeah. Yeah, we might be trying wheat, we are doing very well, but the demand continue to uh, dwarf mm. our supply levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's look at uh, um, the issue just that you just brought in, to say that uh, the, the dietary preferences are moving towards uh, the imported cereals, um, like wheat. Um, and I know, that uh, uh, in the previous uh, season, we, mm. we have been talking about uh, uh, good production and harvest of wheat in this country. What, what has happened to, to that wheat? Well, first and foremost, uh, I want to state that uh, no country, no African state mm. in East, Southern, and Central Africa mm. uh, is providing uh, its uh, uh, citizens with adequate wheat. We are all net importers. Yeah. Um, the wheat production that we have had of 200,000, yeah. uh, that we have reached in the past five years, has been the highest in the history of wheat farming in this mm. country. Mm. It has been higher than the, the yield that was produced during the time of white commercial farmers. So a lot of work has happened yeah. towards uh, local production, which is very good. Uh, but uh, we, we, we still have a very huge youth dividend mm. that is demanding more and more of that. So uh, in, Z in Zimbabwe or in Africa, 
we use dams to water wheat. Mm. In Europe, they don't do that. When the snow is melting, it, it waters that, that's, the, that's when they plant. So the cost of production of wheat in Africa is very high. And the breeds, the varieties that we can use uh, to grow wheat here, uh, are much uh, of uh, lesser uh, output than those ones outside. Right, yeah. So it's to do with the geographical endowment of, each, of Africa. It is not a wheat, naturally it's not a wheat country. Wheat is a, is a winter, uh, it's a cold plant, that plant that survives during the cold season, mm -hmm. in some cases minus 20, and the coldest we become in Zimbabwe is probably two, three mm -hmm. degrees. So we don't have that uh, environment to, to give us the, the, the yields that to, is sufficient. But there's been a, remica a remarkable increase in production mm. of, uh, of wheat in the, in the past five years. Yeah. And it comes with cost. We really need to make sure that uh, it's not about the land mass. We have the land mass to do it. But we have the enough dams uh, to really irrigate. Do we have yeah. the piping and uh, all the irrigation all the equipment yeah. and all the infrastructure to produce the yield that we want. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where people are now saying, uh, with uh, the increase in the production that we're talking about, mm -hmm. is, it, is it fair to, to have an increase in, in uh, bread price? Sorry, come again? In, is it fair to, to have a bread price increase? when we have uh, uh, 200,000 uh, 200, tons of, uh, okay. of wheat? From a yield point, there has been an incremental growth in what we produce. But from a demand, demand has continued to outpace to, to the, grow. Uh, uh, what we are producing. Mm. So in essence, we are producing 50% of what we consume, mm. right? So that is what we are importing from outside. We can't do a campaign where we discourage people from eating bread, can we? No, we can't. Uh, but uh, what we have to do now is to import it uh, in as much as other countries also import from ourselves other commodities. We also have to import uh, from Russia, from Ukraine, and Australia, and other Eastern uh, countries. It has mm. been working well. It's only that the, the war was a spoiler. And uh, this war did not only affect wheat imports, it is affecting our fertilizer industry, mm -hmm. the gas industry. So uh, the world has become one economy and people have been trading scarcities. What you don't have is what I trade, mm -hmm. uh, what I trade you with and uh, vice versa. So yes, we needed the wheat, the wheat has been lending at affordable prices, but uh, where you have got number, f uh, number one, mm -hmm. the biggest producer in the world, and number five, the f yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. yes. Suddenly, out of the global supply, mm. you, you create a crisis. We are, we are actually beyond a crisis. It, the supply um, uh, is depends. Yes. And then, of course, with our so-called speculators, uh, there has been a correlation between the fall of some of the stock markets mm. and the rise of wheat because it's now profitable to uh, dispose to trade, your stocks. Yeah and uh, invest uh, in, in wheat yeah. and other commodities that have been affected by this war. Mm. So as the war continues, uh, obviously no one knows when it's going to end. Mm -hmm. in what are we likely going to see with regards to uh, availability of uh, wheat in the country? Well, for now I can st state with certainty that mm. the industry and the government, mm. we're working together. The pipelines, we have uh, reliable uh, uh, which pipelines yeah. that are coming in, but you said it's war, so mm. we don't know how the war is going to affect. Uh, we need to be limited to these two countries, or perhaps other countries will join yeah. in, and then again we affect uh, uh, the p current alternative pipelines that we have put in place. Mm. We have got Canada is a member of NATO, America is a member of NATO, and they are the biggest uh, uh, wheat producers. We've turned to them now, so. Uh, we, we, look, yeah. it's war, we don't mm. know how, it, only God knows yes. where, where, where we, uh, what will happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, obviously, uh, let's, let's now move on to other cereals, mm -hmm. uh, maize meal. Mm -hmm. we, we also saw that prices went up. Uh, is it the same effect? Well, with maize, generally on the world market prices have gone up of all the commodities. Mm. Maize is an immediate uh, uh, substitute of, uh, of wheat. 
So you can see that uh, even the food and agriculture organization, the, uh, um, the uh, um, other UN agencies mm. that are dealt, that are charged with responsibility of procuring and feeding the starving, uh, has been getting 80% of their requirements from Russia, Ukraine yeah. region. Yeah. Now, uh, they are now resorting to maize as a substitute. Uh, that on its own has increased the yeah. prices of maize on, mm. on, the, on the local market. Yeah. However, uh, currently, the pressures that we have are domestic. Mm. Our price from GMB has moved uh, from 53,000 per ton to 75,000 per ton. That account for 70, th th that account for 50% uh, uh, of our, in fact, it translated to 50% increase in millimeter because millimeter is, is nearly 80% maize mm. and other variables that are coming in. Um, so when we got a 50% increase of maize, local maize, we, had, we could not absorb it. In addition to that, um, the plastic that we, the packaging that we use is a byproduct of crude oil. Mm. So uh, we, we, it's a byproduct of crude oil to, and then uh, it's an import. Yeah affected by uh, the movement uh, both on the parallel market and on the auction. Then, of course, electricity is a big cost. Yeah. Diesel moved big time. Mm -hmm. uh, we are moving to, we are transporting maize from depots which are around 200, 300 kilometers, and then we bring it to a mill and supply it to markets which are around five, four, 500 kilometers. So transport costs uh, uh, you've gone up ma mainly on account of of fuel. Mm -hmm. So those those factors is uh, is affected us mm -hmm. seriously and have caused us with no, you've left out with no option mm -hmm. but to adjust our pricing accordingly. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to be reading some of uh, the comments here. Someone here says that uh, there was no increase on the price of bread. The exchange rate used to peg the price of bread just changed. Uh, that's uh, someone who says it's uh, the, the effect is because of uh, the exchange rate. Well, uh, for starters, I don't comment on behalf of the bread bakers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't represent them, but I'll give you what I understand. Yes, there has been a movement. Uh, if you if you noticed uh, last year in October, the price of bread, horse of price of bread, was seventy five eighty cents. Mm -hmm. Now the horse of price of bread is now ninety cents. So there has been a movement there. Then, of course, the issue of the local currents, I guess in your next program, you're going to invite the bakers so that yeah, yeah. they can ventilate <laughs> you on the, on the market. All the issues of yes. to do with bread. Yeah. But I can tell you the also price in US dollars mm. in the past six months has gone up mm -hmm. slightly. Yeah. So obviously, uh, our listeners and uh, viewers are worried uh, with the increase in the price of uh, uh, millimil uh, because it, it then is our step of food. Mm -hmm. uh, with the issues that you've uh, spoken about, uh, to say these are the factors that drive the prices, mm -hmm. uh, that drive the cost, mm -hmm. are, we, are we also going to see a, a, an increase or an upward trajectory in um, our pricing? Well, because these, these I, I, I'm assuming that they're going to, to be with us for, for some time. Well, we are, we are a business entity and we are party of uh, a value chain. Yeah. Okay, we have got farmers there, we have got the GMB, we have got ourselves, mm. retailers and the consumers. So we are in between. So if the cost of maize, which we don't produce, goes up, hmm. we adjust accordingly. If, if the cost of maize, there is uh, a, a subsidy of some sort and government effects a subsidy, we'll, we'll bring it down. Mm -hmm. But I want to repeat the, the, that uh, it is not in our interest as business. Yeah. to increase prices because it, it affects volumes. We thrive on volumes. The more you produce, the less it costs you to produce a unit. Now, when the prices goes up, consumers e either they don't buy or they reduce. Mm -hmm. Where they're buying two units uh, of, of maize meal, now they're buying one. Uh, where they're buying five loaves, perhaps they'll start to buy two or uh, just uh, uh, stop buying at all. Mm -hmm. and that's not good for industry. So. Uh, it's, I, and and I, I think I speak for bakers and also millers that price increases are not good mm. for industry. They affect our, our, our volumes 
when I, if, uh, you know, we have got a, a, a staff composition. Mm -hmm. We have got a logistics team that, that is in place, stationed to move certain amounts. So if those amounts now uh, uh, depends, then we have a problem. Yeah. So we don't make a profit from increasing prices. We make a profit from increasing volumes. Hmm. That's why we are called fast-moving consumer goods. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that people do not panic, uh, do we have enough uh, maize in stocks? We, we have uh, enough maize that uh, locally. Mm -hmm. We have uh, secured some from a neighboring country and another work with. Uh, we also uh, concluding with one of the um, countries from South America. Uh, so, but we're going to announce our importation plan in the next 10 days. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, again, like I said, I'm going to be reading some of uh, the questions that you are sending in. And uh, this one here is uh, asking uh, that, uh, ask uh, Mr. Msarara, what Oh, it has disappeared. They, they're coming in fast and it has <laughs> just disappeared. Let me try to look for it and, uh, and read it uh, to you. But anyway, as uh, we are almost coming to the end of the program, we want to find out uh, from you as, uh, as millers, uh, if uh, people are, are complaining about the price and you are saying you're in business, you don't want to increase the prices, you want to ensure that you increase the volumes. Um, are, you, are, are, we, are we going to see that happening in, in, in the near future? where you deal with the price aspect and increase the volume? Well, it's not for me or Rebecca to do it alone. It's, uh, it requires collective effort mm -hmm. of the government, of the non-state actors, of the consumers to say, can we endeavor on ma maintaining yeah. prices? Yeah. Our biggest problem in this country mm. in trying to uh, arrest inflation, where, where, where players would meet around and say, guys, we can't go beyond this, let's mm. do that. It's, it's called a, a positive cartel. When you, you meet and you say, guys, we can't increase Prices our, our margins. This, yeah. uh, currently, you know, we are living in a, a free market where if I've got 10 customers wanting my goods, and then tomorrow I wake up with 20 more customers wanting my goods, mm. I now have leverage or space or so opportunity yeah. to, to increase prices. Mm. Okay, That's what free market is supposed to say. If I were to 10 customers and then tomorrow I woke up with five, I might have to reduce the prices in order to attract those that are they've lost. Mm -hmm. So in Zimbabwe, we have a, a problem with the organization called the Competition and Tariff Commission. Its mandate is it's a, uh, or rather the intention of the legislature when they came up with that um, mm -hmm. organization was, uh, was done, was created, was authored on a fatal presumption that at any time there's competition, okay? So where commodities is in short supply, millers are no longer competing. Mm. It's customers who are competing to buy the product. Suppliers are not competing to supply to customers, mm -hmm. okay? So the law is, uh, does not apply in a crisis period like this. But of course the competition tariff have reported us to police that uh, we are meeting to collude Mm. But the intention of meeting to college is to say, how can we buy our grain cheaper together? Mm. We have received a backlash from consumers. How can we reduce the cost of maize meal, cost of flour? We have to agree on the margins mm -hmm. to restrain each other. But then, of course, media, you scream that we are cartels. Mm. You see, but if, you, if we don't dialogue or conversation around those issues, each supplier doing what they, do, what they feel like will be competing to increase prices. Mm -hmm. Here, and the customers will be competing to buy our products. But there has to be a certain, uh, given the critical nature of the mm -hmm. commodities that we make, which forms the basis of national food security. Yeah. Players must sit around and say, guys, I think we can't go beyond this. Let's come up with the uh, price ceilings. Mm -hmm. So, so has that dialogue uh, happened uh, where um, you, you bring together players in the industry? No, we always try, government uh, is, is always insists that we come up with that. Mm -hmm. But then industry now, the moment you finish that meeting, competition tariff says, why, why were you meeting? And I think it's a, it's a useless organization when it comes to that. This is an organization that doesn't have an office 
outside Harare. Uh, it, mm. it, 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 it spent more time flying around the world, but uh, you, you never hear that they were Timbaramsika monitoring competition mm -hmm. or some of these smaller uh, towns. And uh, they, they see opportunity given this, our size. You know, we've got an aggregate annual turnover of 1.2 billion. Mm -hmm. So they see an opportunity to find us. But uh, we have a crisis, mm. right? A crisis that requires the consumer on the table. Uh, the grain supplier, ourselves, the retailers, to say, how can we term uh, the prices, mm. right? We have to agree to say, yes, we have got an opportunity to cost 30% more, but let's all come down. Mm -hmm. So unless we meet, unless we talk, unless we, we, we come up with, with that uh, uh, arrangement mm. as one, as, uh, right, as, as a country, yeah. who never... If, if we will never stabilize prices if each one, one of us is um, is acting in silos. And 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 some people will then say that uh, the the competitions and tariffs commission is there to protect the consumer from uh, uh, suppliers, from mm. uh, manufacturers, mm. uh, and even retailers. Now. Uh, without, like you say, it's a useless <laughs> organization, without mm. uh, the competitions and the tariffs commission, mm. who is going to, to make sure that uh, they check on what is happening? You see, uh, sometimes you don't need to force people to bring prices down. Sometimes you need to converse, to talk, to discuss and say, gentlemen, can you bring the prices down without uh, you know, uh, raising an ex to say if you don't do this mm. you know mm. we don't need that we need to have a social contract ourselves because yeah. because without consumers we close down business the consumers must be earning they must have disposable income mm -hmm. when the competition and tariff act was instituted like i said there was a presumption that there's competition mm -hmm. in the so we need to regulate it but there are instances that there's no competition okay we you we have few guys with maize or wheat, <laughs> mm. right? So where you expect them to compete to sell the, to the customers, to the consumers, it's now consumers competing <laughs> by those products. Mm -hmm. So the law is silent on that. There's no provision that covers that. So now, just to think that every time when suppliers meet, they, therefore it's collusion. Yeah. It's wrong. You just want to look at what is it that they're trying to address. Mm -hmm. The law was meant to arrest the situations where people would meet and collude to increase prices. Mm -hmm. But where people are meeting to say, how can we make it affordable to everyone? Right? Then you say, no, you mustn't talk. Mm -hmm. The law is inadequate. In fact, we must live by the principle that we want uh, the laws for the people, mm -hmm. not people for the laws. Yeah, but, but is, is that the norm, eh, eh, Chairman? Because uh, normally when business uh, people eh, they meet and discuss issues to do with prices, they're looking at profits, and uh, they want to make profits. Well, the profit is one of it, but we'll mm. look at sustainability, okay? You can only uh, obtain profit where people have uh, been uh, able to afford your products. Mm. So if you think you can increase... But the more increased prices, the more profit you make, then you, 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 you simply cost yourself out of the business. Mm -hmm. When the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, pandemic started, yeah. President, uh, former President Trump issued a moratorium on the increase of prices of uh, masks, vaccines, and everything else, and the government had to move in. Mm -hmm. They have to use some, some quasi-martial law to, to manage that. And people have to sit around and talk. So... Even if your product is uh, in short supply, mm -hmm. and we can't, uh, and, uh, and we increase uh, the prices significantly, we won't have people to buy it. Demand is defined by the want or need of a consumer, supported mm -hmm. by buying power. So is that buying power there? Yeah. We need to look at that. We need to say we are, we are in this crisis. Nothing beats uh, uh, people when they converse when they strategize together and they move together. Mm -hmm. 
So we are coming to the end of uh, our program, and uh, let me say thank you so much uh, to uh, the chairperson of uh, the Grain Millers Association of Zimbabwe, Tafaz Wamsarara. He's the one that I had on the program. We were discussing issues around prices, price increases. We have seen that uh, Mili Mili has gone up and uh, other commodities have gone up. But he was talking about uh, quite a number of factors that uh, are pushing uh, the prices to go up. And let me also promise you that we are going to continue with these discussions and see um, what solutions we can come up with as a country, as a people, and uh, make sure that uh, uh, we all are able to uh, afford the basic commodities. Uh, one last uh, contributor here says, upper wages are not increasing, nor any jobs created. Jacques That's uh, the last one there. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Msarara, for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we meet again on other programs. Have a good evening. <laughs>